Greetings all you gems out there, I'm Deez Dizden, and I'm coming at you with the Steven Universe Future episode 17 titled Homeward Bound. Now, this is the lead up to the finale of Steven Universe. Technically, it's a four part part of the four part finale, but eh, it was kind of seen out of order in a certain way. With it was supposed to premiere alongside the uh, theatrical release of Steven Universe the the movie, but uh, because of a little thing called Corona, that wasn't really able to happen. So it was just kind of released on the Cartoon Network app. So uh, it wasn't able to work out the way we wanted it to. But I felt I would review this on its own, especially since it is the reintroduction of the Diamonds and how Homeworld has been ever since the end of Steven Universe the movie. As the gems are kind of shocked to see Jasper coming out of Steven's bathroom and saluting him and calling him her diamond, which really takes them off guard. But Steven just walks away from them all right up to the warp pad. And when they try to question him about what's going on, ask, begging him to talk to them he just literally walls them off yet again you know not wanting them to follow him saying that they can't do anything for him that he that he can only return to specific people at this point and that is namely the diamonds but Garnet begs Steven to remember that they will always be his family before he leaves for Homeworld. And we get to see that Homeworld has become a lot more relaxed, a lot more lax. You know, different gems are able to do different things. The throne room is now a, a part of a tour. You know, it's very laid back, very chill. And Steven runs into Spinel. Your new best friend Spinel is here. And she gives him a big old kiss, which uh, ignites his anger. Like, this kid is popping off his anger at the drop of a hat. But Spinel is just like, you never call, you never write. You know, what's been going on, buddy? And, you know, she's... When once Steven starts to talk about him having issues and needing to see the diamonds, you know, he says talks about how he's been swelling up. Spinel is just like, Oh, you've been having trouble with your physical form. Alright, Yellow Diamond's the one to see about that. As we get to see Yellow Diamond's workshop, where we come to find out that she has actually been piecing together shattered gems and using her power in order to restore them. So, you know, actually, very great. It's just like, th that's a lot of work to be doing, but she's very much up to it. She wants to go so far as to restore the cluster as well. And she's really enthusiastic about this. This is a massive shift from the Steven Universe, the movie, where the Diamonds were just trying to do things in order to help get Steven to remain with them, to just be with them, but now they're actually just doing things kind of of their own accord. They're genuinely trying to be good people and do good things. And, you know, Steven tells Yellow about how he's been swelling and his size has been altering uncontrollably. You know, she tries to use her powers in order to alter his size to something that he might be able to enjoy. But Steven gets a little pissy, you know, throws yet another tantrum because it's not about his form. He wants to feel better. But Yellow's just like, yeah, that's not my department, kiddo. You know, if you want emotional help, you should go to Blue Diamond. So Spinel takes him to Blue Diamond, where we come to find out that her powers have grown and evolved in a certain way. In that, where it used to be that she'd have tears come out that would create sadness, a wave of sadness, she now produces these clouds, which you know, give you unimaginable joy when you touch them. And of all things, we actually get a nice little song by Blue Diamond. Like it and it's a really, really good song. Like my little reason why. And it is just uh, it's a very kind of old timey kind of tune going on here, and which helps because uh, the Blue Diamonds uh, vocal 
you know, voice actress. Lisa Hennigan is a Broadway star. It's just, yes, a Broadway kind of musical number. That's perfect. It is really good. It is a really beautiful song. You know, and she's all about spreading joy and happiness. You know, this is a real 180 from the Blue Diamond we used to know, but Steven's not really taking in any of this, as he doesn't want to artificially be happy. You know, he doesn't want to just be forced to feel happy, he wants to be happy. So, uh, Blue suggests that maybe your problem is one of self-worth. You want to actually just feel that you're being actually represented properly, actually feel how you want to be feeling you you want to let off a little bit of aggression or something along those lines actually feel important so you should see white diamond and we come to find out white kind of has this meditation chamber and she's discovered a brand new power that of whereas originally it used to be that she could take control of others we get to see that her new power is one where she can let others take control of her seeing things through her her eyes acting through her body and it's just like you get to take control of the big head honcho you get to have your voice heard through her so it's just a really wild ability and it's kind of messed up when spinel starts you know goofing around in her body for the most part but you know when she talks to Steven about what's going on with him, she notes that maybe it's not so much that, you know, it's the fact that nobody can really understand what he's going through because he's the only one. He's half diamond, he's half human. Who better to know what he's going through than himself? So she asks if Steven maybe wants to possess her, maybe wants to kind of get a feel uh, for talking to himself for the most part. So he possesses White Diamond, and it's kind of surreal for him at first, but then he comes to a startling realization. He's in the mind of a diamond. That's the last thing he ever wanted. He doesn't want to be a part of the diamond. He's, he hates the diamonds, genuinely. Like, that hate is still there. That contempt, that loathing, it never left. It's still there. And at first, he's kind of taken aback by his anger and the tantrum that he lets out and wonders where this is coming from. But then he flashes back to everything that White Diamond did to him. And he realizes that, you know, I'm in control. You know, I can make you feel as small as you made me feel. You know, I can instill in you the same terror you made me feel. So he straight up goes in to try to, well, if it wasn't for the fact that she was a diamond, and kind of try to shatter her. You know, just tries to ram her gem. Just tries to make her suffer for the most part. And he basically knocks himself out of the control and... White Diamond's completely taken aback by this. Like, what was that? Why was that? What happened there? But Steven runs away, just feeling bad because he he had these malicious, vengeful thoughts. And he goes to Spinell and questions, how did you get over your vengeful thoughts? How were you able to change? And she literally starts quoting Steven and even singing his song, Change, from Steven Universe the movie. And it's just like, Stevens doesn't want his own advice shoved back in his face, even though it was really good advice, yo. Steven was coming from a real genuine place from before. But now it's just a place of, he's just in such a deep place of rage and anger, he can't even take his own advice. So despite the Diamonds really just genuinely wanting to help out a member of their family, Stephen leaves, continuing to swell up, asking them not to follow, and he disappears into the warp pad. Uh, it, it, was, it was nice to see the Diamonds actually becoming someone better, but... 
know, they've just committed so much trauma for Steven. Of course there are gonna be gems, like the gems on Earth, who don't want anything to do with Homeworld or the Diamonds because of what they did. That's their choice, that's why they're on Earth, they get away from all that. But the G Diamonds are genuinely in a place of wanting to help people. And it's up to you if you want to accept that help or feel that you, you don't want to accept any of that. But they are you know making amends they're paying their reparations they're doing what they can to make up for all their misdeeds and trying to help people out there and that's a that seems to be a genuine thing but for steven he's so lost in his anger his hatred his contempt especially for them and everything that he they did to him that he just can't accept that he can't see that he's can't not able to embrace any of that and the fact that he's just running off yet again just really makes you wonder what's it going to take for steven to just kind of come to terms with everything that's gone on around him come to terms with the person that he is his feelings his emotions how is he going to move past everything that he's been through that trauma when the trauma is his family all aspects of his family because he disagrees so vehemently with all aspects of his family with what pink did with what rose did with what greg did what with the diamonds did he just can't take it anymore and it's really starting to come to a head but i can't wait to see what happens uh, if you like this video, leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike and subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you never miss out on another Steven Universe Future episode review. And by another, I mean the last few episodes, which probably I'll, I'll make into a compilation, not do one by one like the rest of these. But it'll be interesting to see the end of an era, and I wonder what's going to come next for these intrepid band of heroes. Will we see this team again? Will Rebecca Sugar work on something else? That remains to be seen, but for now, he is Steven Universe, and he is going through some serious stuff. But until next time, I've been Deuce Dizden, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.